All right, folks, what we're going to do in this segment is we're going to talk about how the demand curve and the supply curve might shift. Okay, I'm going to explain what a curve shift is first, and then I'm going to show you how it, how it can be applied specifically to the demand curve and the supply curve. Okay, so uh, here's the idea. I'm going to give you an example here. We're going to do a, a coordinate plane. We're going to create a graph. The situation here is we have a person who has a job and they work a certain number of hours and we want to know how much their paycheck is going to be. So we're going to graph their hours worked on the horizontal uh, axis and then how much their paycheck is going to be, we're going to graph that on the vertical axis. So what we're going to say is that this person is paid $10 per hour. And what we're going to uh, put over here is, uh, this is the total paycheck. The scale here is going to be $10. So this is going to be $10. This is $20. That's $30, $40, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90. And that top line, that's $100. And the way we're going to count down here is this is going to be one hour at a time. So they work one hour or two hours, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to graph the situation where we want to know based on how many hours they work, how much is their paycheck. Well, if they work zero hours, if they don't work any hours at all, then uh, they're, they, since they get ten dollars an hour, they're going to make zero dollars. So if they work zero hours, that's zero dollars, so I'm going to plot a point here. If they work one hour, they're going to earn $10 because it's, it's $10 for every one hour. So we'll put a dot there. If they work two hours, they'll earn $20, which is here. So that's a dot here and so on. Three hours is $30. Four hours is $40. Five hours is $50. Six hours is $60. Seven hours is $70. $80 for eight hours. $90 for nine hours. And, ten, and $100 for 10 hours. Okay. And what you're seeing here, hopefully you can see very clearly, is this is a linear function and we can draw the curve that represents, this curve is going to represent all of the possibilities for how many hours they work and how much their paycheck will be. So for example, if they work four and a half hours, that'll be halfway between four and five, and we'll go up here and then that'll be this dot right here, which is $45. Okay, And so this linear equation, this linear function represents the, the person's paycheck based on a uh, uh, rate, a pay rate of $10 an hour. Now, the paycheck is given by the variable C. So we can say that their paycheck C is equal to $10 times however many hours they work, so 10 times h. And you may understand what you're seeing here is a linear equation where the input is hours and the output is their paycheck, how much their paycheck is going to be. And we're going to multiply their hours times their, their hourly wage, which is $10, and that'll give us the paycheck. Okay, And so Here's, here's the issue, and this is how it's related to supply and demand. So let's say that I have a supply curve, right? And that's a relationship between quantity and price. And what, what you just learned in the last segment is the fact that when the price changes, so let's say the price is down here at uh, $3.00 then the quantity supplied will be here, quantity supplied. But if the price changes, let's say the price goes up to $6, we will see an increase in quantity supplied. And so this will be QS prime. So we'll have an increase in quantity supplied. And what I just expressed to you, hopefully very emphatically, is the fact that you will have a change in quantity supplied and it requires only that there's a change in price. And all that happens, all that's happening here is the point that we're dealing with is moving 
from here all the way over here, but it's on the exact same curve. It's on the same supply curve. Nothing changed about the supply curve itself. The only thing that changed was, uh, was the fact that um, we're now supplying a larger amount because the price went up. So over here, it's the same thing. If our hours go up from three hours up to five hours, so at three hours, we will earn $30. But at five hours, we will earn $50. We can have a change in our paycheck just simply by changing the number of hours. But it's still a point, we're just moving from one point on this curve to a new point on the same curve. The curve itself did not change. So we didn't have a change in the dynamic or the relationship between um, hours and the paycheck because we're only dealing in two variables and the two variables are hours and paycheck. Just like over here, the only two variables are quantity and price. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a situation where we're going to change a third variable. Here's the idea. It's the idea of a third variable. And I want you to, I want you to get that, the idea of a third variable. Not hours and not, and not the paycheck. What we're going to change here is, note there's a third thing here. There's the, there's the hourly wage. If we were to change that, then everything about this situation is going to change. So let's say that we give this person a raise. Instead of making $10 an hour, they're now making $20 per hour. Okay? And so now what we're going to do is their paycheck, C, is going to be equal to $20 an hour times the number of hours they work. Again, if they work zero hours, they will earn $0. But if they work one hour, their paycheck will now be $20. And so that point is here. If they work two hours, their paycheck will be $40. Three hours will give them $60. Four hours will give them $80. And five hours will give them $100. And what you're seeing here now is all of these points are not on the original graph. They're not on the original line. It's a brand new line. This line, in fact, if I draw it now, let me go ahead and draw this. We have a new line, and what we're seeing here is that the new line, the original curve, has shifted to the left. We have a leftward shift of the original curve, and now this is our new curve. And the way that a shift in a curve occurs is when you have a change. A change in a third variable. When you have a change in a third variable that is not represented on the, on the two axes, the result of that mathematically is a brand new curve. And so I'm going to write this down. Here's, here's what you're going to write in your notes. Well, hopefully you wrote most of this in your notes already. So here's the thing. When you change, when you change a third variable, a third variable, one that is neither, one that is neither the horizontal nor the vertical axis variable. The curve itself changes. The curve itself changes. In fact, we're going to say in parentheses, moves. It moves, becoming a different curve, becoming 
a different curve. Okay? We call this, in economics, we call this dynamic, this event, a shift in the curve. We call this a shift in the curve, okay? And so this idea of a third variable changing, something that you can't see on the coordinate plane, is very common in economics. See, if you have a change in the price, you're just going to have a change in quantity supplied. But if you change something that's neither quantity nor price, a completely different variable, the whole curve itself will move this way or it'll move this way. Okay, there's something I want to show you real quick. This is just a little aside. The word change, we're going to use the word change so much in economics. We can have a change in the price, we can have a change in the quantity supplied, we can have a change in the quantity demanded, we can also have a change in other things, like a change in income. In economics, there's a special symbol that we use that means change. And the symbol we use is the, Greek, the capital Greek letter delta. And it's basically a triangle, okay? And that is the Greek letter, letter delta. And anytime we write that delta, that means change, okay? And so if you see this, if you see delta and then Q sub S, this basically means change in quantity supplied. If it was delta P, that means change in price. Delta Q sub D, that means change in quantity demanded, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do right here is we have an example of a supply curve and an example of a demand curve. And what I'm going to do in each of these cases, I'm going to show you an example of how the demand curve and the supply curve can actually shift. And I'm going to give you a couple of uh, sort of little examples of how or why they would shift, okay? But the first thing that you need to understand is this, and this is really important, is that uh, supply and demand, supply and demand, they only shift, they only shift left or right, never up or down, never up or down. So never say to me in class when you comment, oh, well, the supply curve is shifting up. No, it's not shifting up, it's shifting left. Because it looks very similar. It can look like it went up when actually it went left. And I'll show you why in just a couple minutes. Okay? So anytime we have a shift in the supply curve or a shift in the demand curve, what we're going to say is that it either the supply curve shifted left or the supply curve shifted right. Or the demand curve shifted left or the demand curve shifted right. Okay? That's the first thing. So um, the next thing I want to say is this is I want to remind you that, so we have quantity on the horizontal axis, right? And we have price on the vertical axis. And what I want to remind you once again that we saw in the, in the last segment is that uh, the only thing, well, not the only thing, sorry, when there is a change in price, okay, that results in a change in quantity supplied or a change in price will result in a change in quantity demanded. You remember the exercise we did where, where we had the, the big graph up here and I asked you to identify the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded and at one of the prices, at one of the prices, a higher price, the quantity demanded was low but the quantity supplied was high. And then we lowered the price and at a lower price, the quantity demanded was higher. And at a lower price, the quantity supplied was lower. And what we said was this, is we said that, that a change in quantity supplied or a change in quantity demanded 
requires only a change in price. And that is simply the other, one of the two variables on the graph. But then we just learned about shifting curves and we learned that when there's a change in a third variable that that actually results in a movement of the curve itself. We're not just going from one point on the curve to another point on the curve. We're not just going from here over to here. We are moving the entire curve to a different place on the coordinate plane. And so I want you to write this down. A change in quantity demanded or in quantity, uh, a change in quantity supplied happens because of a change in price. Okay? Happens because of a change in price. But a change in demand, a change in demand or a change in supply results in a shift of the curve results in a shift of the curve because, oops, because of a change in a third variable. A change in a third variable not shown on the market graph. Now let me give you some examples. You're like, okay, so you got the notes written down. Now let's now let's explain. Let me let me explain. So let's talk about demand. Let's talk about sneakers. Okay. Let's say that there is a um, a runner in the Olympics from some country and he's wearing a pair of sneakers, running shoes, that are um, maybe not that expensive, maybe only uh, maybe $50 or $60 for this pair of running shoes, right? Um, and so, but then he winds up running so fast wearing those shoes that he winds up getting a silver medal in one of the events. And everybody loves it, and everybody's really excited, and he came out of nowhere, nobody even expected him to get a medal, right? But now people are so excited about that runner, they're not just excited about the runner, but they're also excited about his shoes. And everybody gets excited and they say, oh man, what kind of shoes was he wearing? And what happens is this, is people now want to buy the shoes that he was wearing. And the company that sells those shoes, they want to use that runner, they want to use him as like a, you know, a, a spokesperson in commercials, right? And now, those shoes, so many people are going to want to buy more of those shoes. Now, the price of the shoe may not have changed. Normally, the only way that people will buy more of the shoe, a higher quantity demanded, the only way they'll want to demand a higher quantity is if the price goes down. But do you think this company is going to lower the price just to sell more shoes? No, now, now the shoe is more popular because the runner who was wearing them is popular. Popularity of the shoe is not the price of the shoe. Popularity of the shoe is not the quantity of the shoe. Popularity is a third variable. And now that the popularity of the shoe has gone up a third variable, what that's going to do is that's going to completely move the curve to a new place on the graph. And what's going to happen is we are going to have a rightward shift of the demand curve. And we're going to call it D with an apostrophe. We call that D prime. And what we just saw is a rightward shift of the demand curve. This is a right shift of the demand curve. That is a change in demand. 
a change in demand is a movement of the curve. It is a movement of the curve. Completely new direction of the curve. Now, that is not a change in quantity demanded. A change in quantity demanded only happens because of a change in price. Or it only requires a change in price. But here, we had a change in popularity and the, and the curve moved to the right. Okay, now let's talk about a different product. Let's say that we have the demand for, um, I don't know, uh, the demand for uh, cheeseburgers at a, at a trendy restaurant. Okay, so let's say that there's this restaurant and their cheeseburgers are like $25. Okay, something happens in the economy and now people have less money. So the economy isn't doing so well, so people get fired or they, they're not getting as many hours as they were working before. And here's what's happening. People have less income. They have less money in their bank account. And because they have less money in the bank account, they're not gonna go buy $25 cheeseburgers. And so what's gonna happen is this. The income of consumers is not the same thing as the price of the cheeseburger, and it's not the same thing as the quantity of the cheeseburger. The price isn't changing, the quantity is not changing. What's changing is people's incomes. And because people are now earning less money, they're not going to go to the restaurant as much. And so the demand for the cheeseburgers is gonna decrease. We're gonna have a leftward shift of the demand curve. And I'm, what I'm going to put here is D with two apostrophes, and we're going to call that D uh, double prime. And this is a left shift, a left shift of the demand curve. Because a third variable, the income of buyers, is the thing that changed, we're not just moving from here to here on the demand curve, we're moving the entire demand curve to the left. And so what you're seeing here is this is what's called a rightward shift of the demand curve and this red one is called a leftward shift of the demand curve. Both of these are examples of change in demand. So if the curve itself moves, we call it a change in demand. If all we did was move from one place on the curve to another place on the curve, we call that a change in quantity demanded. Now let's look at supply. We can have the exact same thing. Let's say that there's a business that's produce. they're willing to produce a certain number of candy bars, right? Because they buy chocolate, they buy peanuts, they have to uh, use electricity to run their machines, they have employees uh, that they have to pay a certain amount of money, okay? And given their cost structure, if, if people want to buy more Candy bars, they have to raise the price. So at a higher price, they will produce more candy bars. But at a lower price, they will produce fewer candy, bar candy bars, okay? And so, let's say something happens. Let's say that the, that the uh, price of chocolate uh, goes down. So they don't have to pay as much money for chocolate. And the price of nuts goes down. So all the money that they have to pay to make candy bars goes down. Because they don't have to pay out as much money to make the candy bars, they have more money in their bank account. And now that they have more money in their bank account, they can buy more chocolate and they can buy more peanuts to make more candy bars. And what that's going to do is that's going to shift because the price of candy bars or not candy bars, because the price of chocolate and peanuts is not the price of candy bars. This is candy bars, not chocolate and peanuts. Because a variable other than the price of the candy bar has changed, we're going to have a movement of the curve entirely. We're going to have a rightward shift of the supply curve, and we're going to call this S prime. That's a, and we're going to put a rightward arrow, and that's going to, we're going to call that a right shift of the supply curve. Okay? That is a movement of the curve, the entire curve moves to the right, movement of the curve. On the other hand, let's say that the employees 
have to get paid more money. They all yell and scream, so they all want to raise. So now the company is going to give all their employees a raise. Well, now it costs more money to make the candy bars, and they, so they don't have as much money in the bank, so they can't buy as much chocolate, and they can't buy as many peanuts, so they can't make as many candy bars because of this raise that they have to give their employees. Well, the amount of money that they pay their employees is not the price of the candy bar, and it's not the quantity of the candy bar. It's a third variable that is not on the graph. And because it's a third variable that is not on the graph, the result is not, is not going to be just a movement from here to here on the curve. It's actually going to be a complete movement of the curve, and that's going to be a left, cur a left shift of the supply curve. And we're going to put S with two apostrophes, which we're going to call S double prime. And we're going to put a left arrow, and what's happening here is this curve has moved over to the left, and we have a left shift of the supply curve. And so this whole idea, what I'm basically trying to show you here is that these curves on the market graph, they are dynamic. They are in motion. They're moving just like a football player on the field. The football player doesn't just stay in one place. The football player is going to run somewhere else and they're going to be in motion because lots of things are happening. Variables are changing. And over time, the demand curve may shift to the right or the left or the supply curve may shift to the right or the left. Why? Because other things in the economic world are changing. I call them third variables because it's not the price changing, it's not the quantity supplied or the quantity demanded changing, it's something completely different that is changing. That's what I mean when I say shifting of the demand and supply curves. Okay.